Tell us, Admiral. Why did you really quit Starfleet? Because it was no longer Starfleet. I'm sorry? Because it was no longer Starfleet. Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Well, I have your attention. I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Well, this is the first time I've uh, done something that's supposedly sort of a regular review that's taken days rather than hours to produce. And that's because I had to make a very hard decision. This is the last time that I will be reviewing either Star Trek Picard or Star Trek Discovery. In fact, I'm never going to review Star Trek ever again. And I would urge you, frankly, to do the same. Not watch it. Don't view it. Don't even watch reviewers of it. It's pointless. Now, I am going to talk a little bit about Star Trek Picard Season 1, Episode 5, but this is really a hell of a lot bigger than that. This is more about your mental health, because if you watched Episode 5 and you actually enjoyed it, then you have a severe psychological problem and need to see immediate treatment before you become a danger to yourself and others. And no, I'm not kidding, as I'll explain why in a moment. Now, I do have some spoilers. In fact, since I'm on my way out the door with Star Trek entirely, I plan to spoil not just the end of Dis uh, Picard, but also the end of Discovery as its next season. So I will never be watching either of those sh shows again. I'm just going to spoil it for you. I'm never going to watch them again. I'm never going to watch Star Trek ever again. And this is after a whole lifetime of being a fan of this franchise. I started with Star Trek in 1967, and I have been with it ever since. And in fact, I count one particular Star Trek moment as more important than my own birthday. But I'm done. I'm done. Since 2009, Star Trek has either been generic action schlock or something that delves more into horror science fiction area. But see, when you turn Star Trek into horror, it's no longer Star Trek. It's just you're producing Alien, and when you do it with Star Trek, it's because you're such a crappy writer that you can't imagine anything else. So in any case, from now on, well, just as Star Wars, Star Trek will have to win me over before I will even watch it. As the old saying goes, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Well, I've let CBS fool me twice into thinking that an unrelated show with the words Star Trek duct taped to the side was actually Star Trek. But never again. Not after episode 5 of Picard. Now don't mistake this as an outrage video because I don't do outrage videos. There are a lot of reviewers out there who are simply portraying outrage. They are acting because they know that outrage sells. They seemingly hate everything and then their viewers come back to watch them, partly because they want to see the outrage. And this causes a very weird feedback loop in fandom where you have, you know, the fans coming to watch somebody outraged, and this person being outraged, and going back into fandom, back and forth, and eventually nobody likes anything, even if it's any good. So for me, I don't, I don't do outrage. If I say something, if I like it, I'll tell you why. If I don't like it, I'll tell you why. But I don't do outrage videos. Unlike these actors, I am the adult in the room. So, in case you've watched Picard Season 1, Episode 5, and frankly, I hope that you haven't, um, or if you don't want to have the rest of Picard's season spoiled for you, or the premise of Se Discovery Season 3 spoiled for you, I guess I will issue a... Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. All hands, prepare for incoming spoilers. Yes, it is a spoiler alert, and that is because I am a fan I master, and that means that the fandom is strong with me. This is neither a boast nor a brag. This is where you find yourself after having watched, read, and listened to over a hundred years' worth of science fiction. Unfortunately, the thing about fan die masters is that we are cursed. We simply can't see the new stuff for the whole century that came before, and we discover that there just isn't that much that's new in the world, and it sometimes interferes with your ability to enjoy things. So, 
this is not an ordinary review. For that matter, it's not exactly a review at all. Um, sorry for the bait and switch, but after Picard Season 1, Episode 5, I had to change my plans. The gore at the beginning of this was totally gratuitous, as was the beheading from the last week at the end of the episode. After Episode 5's gore, you know, I sort of thought that the beheaded guy on Episode 4 was going to be done with it, but after Episode 5's gore, I, well, I remembered back to Star Trek Discovery and its severed infant's heads, and I realized that Star Trek is no longer Star Trek. This is some unrelated science fiction show with the words Star Trek duct taped the side. Now I know, I know that my Padawans love blood and guts and gore and veins in their teeth and eating dead burnt bodies. But that's just the problem. You have become utterly inured to this type of goal. So let me be blunt. This type of goal, gore rather, should disgust you. And no, I'm not being some old man without dating mores. I'm saying, flat out telling you, that in the civilized world, this type of gore should disgust you. If you didn't find it disgusting, if you didn't have to turn away when it happened, like I did, if you didn't decide that this was just too much, then there is something wrong with you, psychologically. And I mean that. If this didn't disgust you, then you have a severe psychological problem and you are in need of immediate treatment before you become a danger to yourself or others. Now, you need to see a therapist as soon as you can. So if you're in the United States, you can find a therapist in your area very easily. Simply go to the URL shown below or call them, um, the number of the American Psychological Association. The URL, of course, is uh, locator.apa.org. The phone number is 800-374-2721. No, I'm not kidding. If you weren't disgusted, then you have a serious psychological problem. You need treatment immediately before you become a danger to yourself or others. And again, if you're in the U.S., call the American Psychological Association at 800-374-2721 or go to locator.apa.org and you can very easily find yourself a therapist. Honestly, I am not kidding. You want to know why there are mass shootings in the United States? It's not because of the guns. Historically, private individuals in the U.S. have had far more access to guns than they do today. You used to be able to order the things through the mail on the Sears catalog. My father, when he was 12 years old, he got a note from his father that it was okay for him to go and buy a, a 22 caliber rifle. He went down to the hardware store, got the rifle, took it to school with him, and the only thing that he had to do was to keep it in the cloakroom because it was causing a disturbance in class because all the kids wanted to go look at it and, you know, mess with it and stuff. That's how it used to be. Gun accessibility clearly is not the problem. The problem is that people in the U.S. have become inured to things that should disgust them. The gore in that episode is one of those things. If it didn't disgust you, then you are in danger of shooting up a theater full of people and capping it off with your own suicide. If you weren't disgusted by the gore in this episode, then you have a serious psychological problem. You need to get treatment immediately before you become a danger to yourself and others. Contact in the U.S. the American Psychological Association at www or sorry just locator.apa.org or call their phone number at 800-374-2721 and they can find you very quickly and very easily a good therapist in your area. Now I know, I mean trust me, I know that my Padawans believe that such gore is more realistic, but I have to ask you, is it really? When you go to look out your window, where do you see this gore? If you're anywhere in the civilized world, look out your window right now and tell me in comments whether you see this kind of gore. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely serious. Pause the video right now, go look out the window, and then come back and leave a comment on this video describing exactly where you saw this gore. So go ahead, I'll, I'll wait. I'll just wait.
Okay, so tell me in the comments, did you see any gore? Don't tell me about something you saw in the press. Tell me if you personally saw gore outside your window when I told you to go look. If, now, you know, even I'll even accept comments about if you've seen this kind of gore in your life somewhere at some time, not just this last minute when I had to go look out the window. I'll be fair. I'll be fair. Although I have to say, if you're a service person who served in combat, you are an exception because you no doubt saw this kind of gore and worse. So I'm asking those of you who have not served, go look out your window or tell me at any point in time of your life, anywhere in the comments, anywhere you've seen this kind of gore. Just leave me a comment. My guess is my comments are going to remain absolutely bare like they almost always are. <laughs> so our big question becomes, why do we think this is normal? If, if you've never seen this kind of gore, then ask yourself, why do I think it's normal? Why do I believe that gore is realistic when I've never experienced it in my life and never will experience it unless I sign up for military duty? Now, if you want my opinion, as a Fandai master who's watched this evolve for 50 years. The reason that you think it's realistic is because your popular entertainment has done nothing less than brainwashing you to believe that it is. Now it's almost certain that wherever you live, it's a pretty good place. You have good, true friends, the kind who will have your back, you know, when the chips are down. You may have a, a man or a woman who truly loves you. You might have children upon whom you dote and would do anything crawling through broken glass if it meant that they were to help them to help them if they were in trouble that's most people's lives but it is not the life of those who produce our entertainment you see they live and work in the worst place in the world hollywood california you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy the people who live and work there would horrify you they are duplicitous beyond imagination. A handshake means nothing to them. They have no friends. The successful ones have yes men and hangers on who behave like friends. And they sort of orbit successful people solely to exploit their wealth. And the moment that person is no longer has any wealth to exploit or isn't generating any new stuff, all these people will just disappear and go to the next person in order to exploit their wealth. And if you're not successful, then you are attempting to curry the favor or exploit the wealth of someone who is. You become a yes man or a hanger on orbiting this person, hoping to get some peace of them. And you behave like their friend, but the moment that they're no longer successful or useful to you, you'll find someone else. These people in Hollywood, they have no loved ones. The successful ones, of course, have spouses or significant others of some kind, men and women alike, who behave as though they love them. However, the moment that they can make more money by leaving rather than staying, they are gone. Most importantly, in Hollywood, rape and child molestation rule the day. The term casting couch is not even remotely new. It predates my existence by a couple of generations. They be using that the moment that Hollywood started out. And the reason that the Me Too movement exists isn't because the world is full of sexual predators. It's because Hollywood is full of sexual predators. The Me Too movement see, was started by some actresses who just assumed that just because they'd been raped and molested since they entered the business meant that everyone else must be exactly the same. And furthermore, it starts at a very young age. Scumbag Milo Yiannopoulos tells the stories about a Hollywood party that he attended at which young boys were being raped by a very famous director and his friends, which, by the way, makes Milo a scumbag for being, and seeing, being a witness to this and doing precisely dick to stop it. And, of course, actor Corey Feldman. My God, he's discussed all kinds of stories about having been raped in Hollywood from an early age. All of this, every last bit of it, is normal in Hollywood. And because, that, because of that, those who create our popular entertainment, whether it's music, film, TV, streaming media, all of it, they have a very twisted view of reality. Since they spend all of their lives in a world full of horrors, they assume that the rest of the world must be exactly the same. And 
Look out your window. It's not. But if all you know, if your entire life is surrounded by nothing but horror, then horror is the only thing that you can create. And by creating nothing but horror for decades, they have inured us to the feelings of others. It's why people are such dreadholes to each other on social media. It's why people shoot up theaters full of people, because they've been brainwashed by those who exist in nothing but horror to believe that the rest of the world is horror. I mean, when you have, you know, if you believe that ripping an eye socket out of someone, or eye out of an eye socket is normal, well, they're, you know, they're not really people at all. So why not? But behave like a dren hole on social media. It's not like there's individuals on the other end of that screen. They're just words. They're not worthy of human respect. And why not shoot up a theater full of people? It's not like they're human beings. They're just blood sacks, the same as you see throughout your popular culture. They're not worthy of any respect as a human being. So again, if you were not disgusted by the gore in this episode, then you have a serious psychological problem. You need treatment immediately before you become a danger to yourself or others. And if you're in the U.S., call the American Psychological Association at 800-374-2721 or go to locator.apa.org and you can find a therapist in your area. And now, to spoil the end of Star Trek Picard and the premise of Star Trek Discovery Season 3. Star Trek Picard is going to tie into Star Trek Discovery's second season. That super AI that we all thought destroyed is in fact going to be behind all of this. And this is why the synths destroyed Mars, and it's going to be why everybody thinks of Soji as the destroyer. Because Soji and the Bruce Maddox androids are the current incarnation of that AI. That's why they think, that's why they're going to destroy everything. And then Star Trek Discovery's third season will then take a totally destroy Gene Roddenberry's legacy by ripping off another one of his properties, Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda. If you've never seen that, go watch. It's a very good show until about fourth or fifth season. But the Federation, which is Gene Roddenberry's ideals incarnate, will have been destroyed centuries ago. And specifically, it will have been destroyed at the hands of the synths at the end of Picard's last season. I know, man, it sounds awful and stupid. But if all you know is horror, then horror is all that you can create. Now, at the end of a review, which this isn't really, we might ask ourselves, is this episode, Picard Season 1, Episode 5, any good? Well, no. No, it was simply another in a long line of shows made by people who live and work in horror. Always remember, Hollywood, California. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. And again, if you were not disgusted by the gore that you saw in this episode, then you have a serious psychological problem. You need to seek treatment immediately before you become a danger to yourself or others. So in the U.S., call the APA at 800-374-2741 or go to locator.apa.org to find yourself a therapist in your area. But as for myself, well, I'm out. Those who can only create horror have ruined my lifelong association with Star Trek. I hope that you will join me in abandoning Star Trek as well, because Star Trek is no longer Star Trek. Now, there is some good to come from all this for Tales from SYL Ranch, because between Picard, Doctor Who, and Batwoman, I've not had as much time to review some things that I'd like to review, such as classic films and fan films. But with Star Trek in any incarnation now permanently out of the way, that will open up additional time for other better science fiction. Or worse science fiction, because on occasion I have reviewed some that are rather suck. Frankenstein 1970. Uh, worst film I've ever made, ever made. In any case, Star Trek is permanently gone. Doctor Who is two weeks away from being done with its season, and the uh, ratings are so low that it may well be canceled. I'm not going to stop with Batwoman, despite it being just mindless drivel that makes anyone who watches it dumber by osmosis. 
But I will be reviewing the Orville when it comes back, as well as other series and movies. If there's something you'd like me to review, leave a comment and I'll try to work it in. But Star Trek being permanently gone, well, I can now fill other content. Mostly it's going to be classic films and fan films for the foreseeable future. So that is all that I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So, thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Tell us, Admiral. Why did you really quit Starfleet? Because it was no longer Starfleet. I'm sorry? Because it was no longer Starfleet. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.